retaining wall did get moved a little bit closer to the house. But by moving the spa around to the other side, I think everything will fit fine. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Well, hi, and welcome to the home time, home of the future. I'm Joanne Liebler. And I'm Dean Johnson. This is a third of five programs in which we're following the construction of this house. Now, the reason we're building it is we're trying to predict what building techniques, design ideas, and materials will be used in housing, let's say, oh, 20 or 30 years from now. Well, history may prove us wrong on a couple of these points, but we're having a lot of fun in the meantime. And today we're going to be looking at the windows and the doors, the siding, the insulation, and the drywall. And we're using progressive products in all those areas. So we hope you'll join us. So you have to get a load of this house from the second floor. You got a that view scoped really, out that I haven't seen? Yeah, you really get a nice feel for the, you know, the whole area. Home Time is made possible by Chevrolet Motor Division, who brings you compact pickups and other trucks for personal and business use. Today's truck is Chevrolet, the heartbeat of America. And brought to you by the Stanley Works of New Britain, Connecticut. For generations, Stanley's been committed to building quality tools and other products to help you do things right. Well, it'll be super nice when they get that stairway in. Yeah, and the railing. Boy, this is some view up here. You know, from this desk area up here, you can see the kitchen just fine. That's kind of nice. Yeah, well, that's kind of the idea. One big room with lots of different spaces in it, so people can do different things and still stay in touch. Well, it gives us sort of an expanded family room. We call it the S-room. And of all the architectural features in the house, this is the most noticeable. The S room is the core of the house. It's a combination living room, dining room, and kitchen. And there are four wings off of each corner of the S room. There are some functional spaces off of the second floor loft, as well as two small bedrooms. The outside of the house has some striking features, we think, including the window configuration and the elaborate roof. And even though the house has a lot of room inside, Overall, it's small enough to fit onto a 90-foot wide lot. Well, the last time we were here, the mechanical contractors, the plumber, the heating guy, and the electrician were doing the rough-in. Of course, the rough-in is when they put the pipes, the wires, and the ducts into the walls. I guess the storyline here is that there aren't any dramatic new developments in this area, and it probably won't be in the foreseeable future. The materials and the techniques that are common now will probably still be around 20, 30, even 40 years from now. Well, for example, our plumbing drain pipes are plastic. Plastic drain pipes, whether it's this black ABS or white PVC, has been around for about 20 years. And almost everybody agrees that for a drain system, plastic pipe is cheaper, it's easier to put in, and it'll hold up well. There are still parts of the country where the old type of drain pipes, these um, thick cast iron pipes, are still used in new construction. I guess building codes and plumbers are sometimes slow to change their ways. But now that most of the country has switched over to plastic drain pipes, that's what we'll be using for a long time. Well, there's a similar debate over plumbing supply lines. We have copper, and there's no doubt that copper is a big improvement over the galvanized pipe they used over 60 years ago. But there are some companies promoting flexible plastic supply lines. The plastic pipes are approved by most building codes, and the manufacturers make some real good arguments for the fact it saves plumbers time, and the system is just as leak-proof as copper. But the jury's still out on this type of product. We've heard a couple of horror stories about plastic pipes bringing leaks. So like most plumbing contractors and builders, we're not willing to experiment on our house. Copper is the industry standard. It seems to be a superior product, and everybody's familiar with it. So as far as we're concerned, copper supply lines will be around for a long time to come. Unlike the plumbing pipes, there's probably going to be room for lots of innovation for wiring systems inside the house. For our electrical system, that is the wires for the outlets and for the lights, we're using standard non-metallic cheese cable, which everybody calls Romex. Now, there was a time when some manufacturers were using aluminum wires inside the cables, but the aluminum wires posed a fire hazard after a while. So now, with these copper conductors, this type of cable is now the industry standard, and it probably will be well into the future. Nowadays, there's more and more wiring not just wiring for electricity, but also for phones, video, music, and so on. So consequently, down the road, there probably will be changes in how they wire holes. For us, that means a separate contractor running a lot of extra wires for a lot of different electronic systems. 
This type of contractor specializes in entertainment systems. They're running wires throughout the house for audio and video. They're also running the phone wires and the wires for the thermostat. In addition to these wires, there will also be wires for security system, for lighting and window controls, smoke and heat detectors, and for things called occupancy sensors. In all, there are 15 different types of wire running throughout the house. Now someday, all these wires may be combined, so we just need a few to perform the same function. In fact, there is a project like that underway right now. Unfortunately, it wasn't ready to be incorporated into this house. What's most significant about the wiring in this house is that all these different systems, the telephone, climate control, entertainment, the lighting, security, they're all going to be tied together into one central controller. Now we have one designer for all of these systems, and he's called the Electronic Architect. We have one company that will install everything, but all we have right now is just a big old mess of wires. Well, once we get them all connected together, then we'll show you how it works. Careful of all these cords that are out here. Yeah, it could be a little tricky. Well, things are starting to move outside again. They have just about all the windows in, and they're all set to install the siding. There are a couple of things that are notable about our windows, and they illustrate some trends that we've been following in windows and the products that go into them. Well, first, we wanted windows that were as energy efficient as possible. That all starts with the glazing, with the glass. This is double pane glass, and the area between the glass is filled with argon gas. This is probably the most energy-efficient glass on the market today. And the frames and sashes are all made out of wood, which again is the best choice for energy. Energy-efficient windows are becoming the norm in our part of the country. It used to be you had to special order this type of window. But now, if you want single-pane glass, you have to special order that. Even using top-of-the-line windows like these, use the latest technology on the market, they still only achieve an R value of about 4. For comparison's sake, on our walls here, we're required to have an R value of 19, so I'm sure manufacturers down the road will continue to increase their energy performance on the windows. Maintenance is another area where windows are improving. Now, we went with wood trim around our windows for energy purposes. However, wood trim elements require a certain degree of ongoing maintenance, specifically painting. Wood windows are available clad in aluminum or vinyl. They definitely take less maintenance, which is good, but we're going to go with something different new type of finish. This is a factory applied finish, which means that it's been put on at the window factory under ideal temperature and moisture conditions. This alone should go a long way toward making the finish last a long time. But this is also a special type of paint developed specially for windows. It's available from our manufacturer in 54 different colors. Our windows have some neat high-tech features. Remote controls, glass that does some pretty fancy stuff. But we won't show you those till we get all of our wiring hooked up. Anyway, it's probably the design and the layout of the windows and not the individual features that's the most noticeable thing about them. And it's not because we've got these fancy customized window units. Actually, we've got rather standard window units and they're just arranged in an interesting pattern. Almost all the basic window units in the house are 24 inches high and from 28 to 36 inches wide. The architect has mixed and matched these units into different configurations. The shape of the window areas makes a bold design statement. And we get this boldness with only a few custom windows, like the five round units high on each gable. By ignoring some of the conventions of window placement and putting windows wherever we want, our house design lets the windows be more functional. Well, for instance, skylights have always been a way to let in natural light without sacrificing privacy. But in our house, there are also wide bands of windows unusually high on the walls. And these perform the same function as skylights. A lot of people that have come through this house have commented how many windows there are. And we like the fact that you notice that. In the future, window layout and design is going to be a lot more important. Home buyers are going to want the extra value that comes in a home that has a good design in its windows, and in the whole house for that matter. We hope we're demonstrating that with this house. we considered a lot of different materials, brick, stucco, wood shingles, but we thought we'd experiment a little. We're using a siding panel made out of oriented strand board. Now true, panel siding isn't something you'd typically see on a house of this size and cost, 
but we're using a material that's a little bit different than normal, and we're applying it in an unusual pattern. The material is an oriented strand board with a little extra moisture resistance built in, and you can see that it's already been primed, which is going to help it resist the elements even more. And instead of the standard 4 by 8 sheets that you might expect with panel siding, we've got sheets here that are 4 feet wide and 16 feet long. That's going to allow us to put the siding up in interesting configurations. The siding is going up in horizontal bands. Because the pieces are 16 feet long, there are only a few places where we need a vertical seam between pieces. Panels almost always run into a corner or a window before we need to join them end to end. This construction poses some problems. We want to make sure the horizontal seams are sealed up tight. So we put in Z-flashing at each joint. The flashing goes in behind the upper piece and in front of the lower piece, so the water is always directed away from the house. We're creating a very horizontal look, wide bands wrapping all the way around the house. We're reinforcing that look by placing one by two battens at the horizontal seams and in the middle of the pieces. So in effect, we've created two foot high bands. The bands of siding are two feet high and so is the basic window unit. So the windows and siding combine to carry this pattern around the entire home. We're not saying that all homes of the future will have this particular pattern on them. We are saying that builders, designers, and architects are going to be taking materials that we're used to, like wood and brick, and standard elements like windows and doors, and combining them in new ways to create unique new looks. Oh boy, what a mess, huh? Yeah, we have a couple of messy jobs going on in here. They're doing drywall and insulation. In fact, we're using a new insulation product. Actually, it's a used product, recycled newspaper. Now, this is a throwback to the old, old houses where they used to just stuff newspapers in the walls for insulation. But that wasn't real effective. Sheets of newspaper are not a good insulator, and it wasn't real safe. It burned very easily. Whereas something like this has taken care of both of those problems. The product is about 80% recycled newsprint. It's processed, and it's treated to keep it from burning. It takes a special rig to install it. The bags of insulation are dropped into a hopper inside a blower truck. Then the material is fluffed up and blown through a thick tube to where the insulator's working. A little nozzle on the end of the tube squirts water onto the wall, just ahead of where the insulation is being blown. Now, you really can't see it, but the water coats the surface, and that's what makes the insulation stick to it. As you can see, all he has to do is point the insulation where he wants it, and it fills up pretty quick. In fact, he layers on more than he needs. Then another worker comes along and scrapes the excess off with his nifty little motorized scrubber. He scrapes it down, even with the surface of the wall studs. And so it doesn't go to waste. The third guy sucks the excess off the floor with a vacuum. Now this leads back to the truck, where the leftover is mixed with the new. The process is a little dusty, but the material is perfectly safe. We're also blowing the same product in all of our attic spaces every place in the house where we need insulation. It's a pretty impressive process. Now this insulation has an R value just slightly better than traditional insulation. However, the one big benefit is that it fills up the wall cavity completely. It doesn't have to be cut or compressed or folded to fit in the spaces. It's got a consistent density, and this can cut down on air infiltration by 30%. Another important consideration is air can't circulate inside the material itself like it can with regular fiberglass. This is what they call a convection loop, and it can seriously decrease the energy performance of traditional insulation. Right now, this process costs a little bit more than ordinary insulation. However, it should pay for itself down the road with energy savings. And if the product catches on, the price should come down. One thing you have to realize, this is a material that should be installed by professionals. It's not a do-it-yourself product like fiberglass. Over our new type of insulation, we're also installing a new type of wallboard. And incidentally, this is also made out of recycled newspapers. In fact, it's made out of about 15% recycled newspaper. The rest is mostly gypsum, which is the main ingredient of regular drywall. Except this product's made to be a little bit stronger and more durable. It's a little bit heavier, too. About 8% heavier, to be exact. And because of that, the installation techniques are a little different. Now, our drywall contractor is using traditional installation techniques. But we're going to demonstrate some new methods that are recommended by the manufacturer. And one of these is to use staples to secure the drywall. And 
set of nails or screws. Well, it sure is a lot easier than using a drywall hammer and nails, don't you think? Yeah, or one of those screw guns. It takes a lot less skill to use one of the staplers, huh? We can get a lot closer to the edge than with regular drywall. Huh. For comparison's sake, what we'll do is take a regular piece of drywall and try the same thing. Okay, you got it there? Yeah. Huh. Those staples seem to be working just fine. Well, it seems all right. I'll tell you what, let's see how it's holding. Well, there's no comparison there. I know. Tell you what, let's give it another test. Okay. You ready? Okay. Go ahead. Here it goes. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, do it same spot, just as hard. Hmm. Well, that's a product that's living up to everything the manufacturer said it would do. The hardness of this drywall is its strength and its main selling point. So it should hold up pretty well if you should say, oh, knock a doorknob against it and... It also holds a nail pretty well if you want to hang a picture or just about anything else. I still have to believe, though, this product is going to be a little bit more difficult to cut and shape in comparison to regular drywall. A regular drywall goes pretty easily. Now, now let's give this a try. Oh, yeah. This goes a little slower, and you've got to work a little harder. Well, that pretty much jives with what our drywall contractor has been telling us. They say this stuff is a little hard to cut. They've been using power saws rather than hand saws, and they've been going through quite a few power router bits. Oh, but it hasn't slowed them down at all. No, they got the ceilings done in here. We brought the drywall contractor in to do the ceilings so the insulators could blow insulation into the attic areas. Rocking the ceilings in this house is no easy task. For instance, in the us room, the ceiling is 24 feet up from the ground. Ours is one of the first houses where this new wallboard is being tried out. Now, the product has a lot of promise, and if the manufacturer can make it a little easier to cut, it'll probably catch on. Now, once the insulators are all done, the drywallers will come back, they'll hang the rest of the drywall and do the taping. Yeah, it'll be kind of nice to have all the walls covered up. Boy, it'll sure change the feel of this place, won't it? I guess they're pulling the doors off the jams, taking those downstairs so they can get a little head start on painting. Well, things are really getting crazy around here. I think there's 10 different crews working in different spots in the house. Well, it's a little unusual to have that much activity going on at once, but we've got a deadline that's less than a month away, so it's going to be kind of crazy around here the next couple of weeks. Well, where do you want to start? Uh, well, how about the glass block? All right. A glass block is one of those materials that has a tendency to go in and out of style quite a bit. It's popular at different times in different parts of the country. Here, it's going to let light into the second floor bathroom from the us room. This will help connect the second floor with the main part of the house without sacrificing privacy. The 
Finnish carpentry crew has started work around the house. The interior doors are all in. Now they're starting to put in baseboards and trim around the windows and doors. Usually when you specify mill work for a new house, you choose between two or three standard designs. Well, we had a special design made up and then we had a custom mill. In the future, we think there will probably be a lot more trim styles to choose from. So we went ahead and created our own to make this point. Now, it might look as though we did the same thing with the doors. There are circles built into a couple spots on the house, and the circle design on the doors picks up on those. But it isn't a custom door. It's actually a stock item from our regular door manufacturer. So we are beginning to see more design choices in stock items. Our tile contractor is also one of the guys working here today. Now, usually at home time, we advise people to be pretty conservative when they're picking out their tile. But for this project, we've ignored that advice. We've chosen some pretty bold tile designs, and we think that in the future, there are going to be fewer rules about design choices that work and don't work. People may want to be a little more dramatic, and we're just trying to show some of those possibilities. Our cabinet installation is also scheduled to start today. You can see we have a pretty interesting cabinet style. I guess this is what they tend to call European styling, although it's the latest version of that style. Well, these cabinets are from Germany. Now, don't get us wrong, we're not saying all cabinets down the road are going to be imported. What we are saying, though, is in the future, we think cabinets will tend to look like these. Our research tells us that historically, most of the new design ideas come out of Europe. So for example, a lot of the old American cabinets just used to be plain brown boxes. But now, a lot of domestic manufacturers are offering more design options and interior features. And this is due to the European influence. So, even though these are very expensive cutting-edge cabinets, in the future, cabinets that look like these will be mass-produced and kept in stock at home centers. And they'll probably be in a price range that most people can afford. These cabinets may look unique, but they're installed pretty much like any contemporary high-quality cabinet. An exception here is the metal legs in the island area. These extend to the flooring, replacing the traditional toe kick. We've got cabinets in eight areas of the house besides the kitchen. These cabinets are designed for use by someone in a wheelchair. They're in our multi-purpose room, and we want the room to be able to function as an apartment for an elderly person. And we've also got two elaborate desk areas on the balcony one for the adults, and one for the kids. We're using a glass block contractor for most of the glass block work in the house. However, we're doing this section ourselves. It's a wall that would let light into the bathroom here in the master suite through the bedroom. So for privacy, we're using this frosted block. And what's interesting is this is a new installation technique. Right, instead of having to mix up mortar to join the block, we're using a system that uses tracks, spacers, and silicone sealant. The white plastic track holds the outside edge of the block in place, and the flexible spacers make sure that there's just the right gap between each block. Are we using just a little silicone caulk to hold the spacers in place? When you've got an area done, you can use the caulk to fill in the gaps on the surface between the blocks. They even supply a little plastic spoon to work the joints properly. This technique makes glass block a do-it-yourself project. It can be used for interior areas up to 85 square feet and exterior areas up to 25 square feet. Wow, the glass block around this chair tower is going to look nice, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. But for this, we have a professional contractor coming in to install. Say, uh, when are they going to start anyway, do you know? Oh, well, the papers have to finish up first, and then they said they could do it in three or four days. Oh, okay. Almost all the major elements are in place for this backyard patio area. The pool and the spa have been set, and the concrete's been poured around them. They're working on all the finishing touches right now. The patio itself is going to be brick pavers. The crew's been working on it for about two weeks, filling it all in, compacting it, making sure it has just the right slope. Now, there are a couple of places where the bricks are already in. Now, this is a clay paver, which means there's some special installation techniques. We'll watch some of that brick paver installation in our next episode. Meanwhile, out in front here, things are a little more complicated. We've got a lot more brick pavers going in, a whole driveway's worth, in fact. Well, we've had a lot of traffic coming through here. Just about every subcontractor wants to back their truck up to the front door. And some days we've had as many as three or four bobcats and the lift for the painters driving back and forth. Yeah, so we're not ready for brick pavers or much of anything. 
That reminds me, our lighting designer called. She's been out here every day just to make sure that these placement flags for the exterior stuff don't get knocked down. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Well, at least the masons are done out here. They're just about done with the painting. And I think we'll make it in two and a half weeks. We don't have a choice, do we? Nope. Well, obviously, there will be a lot to talk about and show you on our next program, so we hope you'll join us. I'm Joanne Liebler. And I'm Dean Johnson. Thanks for watching. Home Time is made possible by Chevrolet Motor Division, who brings you blazers and other trucks for personal and business use. Today's truck is Chevrolet, the heartbeat of America. And brought to you by the Stanley Works of New Britain, Connecticut. For generations, Stanley's been committed to building quality tools and other products to help you do things right. This is PBS. A complete copy of Home Time's five-part series, A Home of the Future, is available on video cassette. In addition to the techniques you just saw, this tape covers foundations, framing, roofing, drywall, automation, and landscape, all using techniques and materials we think will be in common use in the future. The price is $9.99. To order this or any other Home Time tape, call 1-800-736. 3033. A portion of today's programming has been funded in part by Four Seasons Sunrooms, manufacturers and installers of affordable energy systems.